Can the Ukrainians win this war? The Russians have reportedly been retreating from areas around Kyiv and repositioning their military in other areas they already control. But they've also been shelling the Ukrainian capital and other cities, despite promising not to. Don't trust the Russians. Today, President Biden said you've got to take any reports of a Russian retreat with a grain of salt. Grandpa? I'm a skeptic, I, I, but I don't have proof that, in fact, he is not going, he's taking a pause. Don't know the answer, but it appears so far that he has not pulled all of his, the idea he's pulling all the troops out from around Kiev and moving south. There's no evidence that he's done that. He thinks he's holding part of a toy train. Back in Ukraine, the situation in some places is extremely grim. Today, President Vladimir Zelensky gave a heartbreaking update on the humanitarian disaster. There is nothing there. No food, no water, no medicament. There is no life there. There is nothing that is necessary for having any kind of life. Zelensky also begging the West for more help. He says his people are beginning to run low on weapons, like the Javelin missiles that have decimated Russian tank battalions. Much of the country has been destroyed, as you know, as you have seen. Four million refugees have already fled, millions more displaced. So what does it look like on the ground? Here with me in studio, Fox News foreign correspondent Trey Yinkst. He is back from a month on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, how bad is it? And first of all, welcome back. We're so happy you're here. Uh, your reporting has been phenomenal. And I know it's also been very difficult for you. But first, how bad has it been? And I know you've reported in war zones around the globe, but how does this differ? Yeah, well, Kennedy, the weapons that are being used right now around civilian areas are significant and they're quite different from what we see in other conflict zones. Mm -hmm. Ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and shelling targeting civilian areas. And at first, we reported this as indiscriminate shelling, but this is a coordinated campaign by Russian President Putin to target civilian areas, as he has done in other places in the world, like Syria, and then ultimately move his forces forward. The thing the Russians were not, it appears, prepared for was the amount of resistance that we've seen from the Ukrainians. And that hasn't softened, correct? You know, it's like we are now uh, almost five weeks past five weeks into this war and you know you still see people on the ground men on the ground who are fighting tooth and nail how are they sustaining that because obviously places like Mariupol there's no food there's no water there's no electricity we're hearing about famine throughout the country so you know obviously there's a lot of internal grit that goes into that but you have to have physical sustenance in order to keep going so how are they doing it Absolutely. And there's a huge difference right now between the cities that have supply lines open, like Kiev, the capital, and cities that don't, like Mariupol, this southern port city. Mm -hmm. When there's a supply line open, they're able to get more weapons in, ammunition, anti-tank, javelin missiles, these aircraft batteries that are able to defend against Russian jets overhead. But in areas that they don't have those supply lines open, they are fighting down to the last bullet. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem in these southern areas that Russians now partially control. Ukrainian forces, in many cases, are surrounded, and they're having to either fight their way out or be totally targeted by these Russian soldiers. Man, it is, you know, it, it, it's something that... I'm glad you were there. It's incredibly dangerous. And obviously, you know, five journalists have lost their lives covering this conflict, including two Fox News journalists. And I know that you were instrumental in getting Benjamin Hall out of the country, but also uh, recovering the bodies of the two Fox News, the, the cameraman and the journalist that you've worked with for years. How did you do that? And, and what other organizations did you work with that, that might surprise some people? Yeah, look, the situation that happened on the ground in Ukraine was tragic, devastating. It was a nightmare scenario. We lost two of our colleagues yeah. in the field, my cameraman and fixer. Uh, journalist Sasha on the ground and, and Pierre, the cameraman. Uh, Benjamin Hall was injured in this. Um, a lot of the credit should go to other people because they worked around the clock to assist our team to get the individuals out. And fortunately, uh, Benjamin is doing well, he's stable and Do you he's talk alert. To him? Uh, I have, and he is in good spirits. Good. And I think when he heals, he will be back covering the news. He's an incredible journalist, and he's a strong guy. And I think that he will get through this. Does it does it make you pause in your own personal life when you see uh, people that you've been close to 
succumb to you know this vicious murder and someone like Benjamin Hall because you know we assume that the ones who are reporting are really you know you're Teflon you're untouchable you're our people you're the ones showing us the most dangerous places on earth but does it make you rethink what you do at all I think that it gave us a moment to really look at what happened and identify how tragic this was, but we understand the risks going into these areas. They're dangerous areas, and it doesn't matter if you prepare for weeks mm -hmm. and if you take every precaution that you can take. When there's this amount of firing on civilian areas, it's impossible to ever be 100% prepared, and it's a risk that comes with covering these areas, but these journalists, Pierre, Sasha, Benjamin, were committed to getting the story out to the world. They were witnessing these abuses taking place before their eyes. Yeah. And they were committed to getting the story out. And we see that so often by journalists who are working in war zones across the board. A commitment to the truth, a commitment to accountability, making sure that when the Russians say they aren't targeting civilian areas, that they put cameras in those areas and they capture what's happening on the ground as to show people yeah. what's happening. Not tell them what to think, but to simply show them the facts. And Pierre, Sasha, and Benjamin are those very type of journalists. They were there doing their job when this tragic incident happened. And so are you. And, and I, 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 are you upset? Are you mad? And does that color your reporting, knowing what happened? Look, I think the way that I've come out of this is understanding what I can do and what I will continue to do. And that is to tell stories in their honor and to be even more motivated yeah. to hold people accountable to shine light in dark places, and to make sure the world knows what's happening on the ground in Ukraine. We saw it. It hit close to home when we lost two of our colleagues. Mm. But personally, for me, I am motivated more than ever to practice this craft at the highest level, to make sure that the world knows what's happening, and to tell our viewers the news. All right. Well, give them hell. When are you going back out there? Soon. All right. We'll be watching and uh, talking to you and, and getting your reporting, because uh, you were at the top of your field, so thank you so much, Trey. Thanks, Kennedy. Good to talk to you.